Let me introduce uh, briefly uh, Barcelona International Welcome, which is the service for international talent. Uh, it's a service of the City Council, and I am a member of this, uh, this service, Barcelona International Welcome. I don't know, because maybe some of you don't know about us. Just let me explain you. Uh, let's see. Okay. This is our website portal of the service, Barcelona International Welcome. We offer practical information and resources for people who come to live to Barcelona and to work, to invest, to study, like most of you. And we try to provide information, resources, activities to facilitate the landing, the arrival, and establishment in the city. On our website, well, this is just a, a shot of the, of the home, uh, but you can find information on practicalities about living in the city. You can find a very detailed section on procedures, on formalities and procedures like visas, uh, permits, like uh, the, the topic we are talking at this session today. And we also organize uh, various activities during the year, like this conference today, but we have about two or three activities a month. You can find information on these activities also on the website. And also, if you, if you subscribe to the newsletter, you get all the information. We have these bookmarks that are like flyers of our, of our services. Here you can find a QR code to subscribe to the newsletter and all the information about our website. Uh, well, just a briefly introduction so, so you know what, what the City Council does for the international talent. If you have any question about that, we can talk after. But let's start with the session today the, about the student visa. We will have the presentations by Christian and Laesa, and we will have about 20 minutes for the Q&A. Please use this time to ask your questions because uh, af when we finish the session, we have to leave. So maybe uh, you want to talk to them more in private, but we won't have much time. So please, please use the time for the Q&A, OK? Uh, so let's start. Uh, let me welcome and thank you, Christian and Laesa, who, who work at the law firm Balsales Lawyers Group. Christian Balsales, uh, he is a lawyer and he's the founder and CEO of the law firm uh, that is specialized in the legal areas that affect expats, like immigration, but also taxes, property, and company incorporation. And Laesa uh, Bococo, who is uh, also a lawyer at this firm, she graduated in law and she has various master's degrees in labor and economy and have seven years of experience as an advisor on immigration. So they are two experts on this subject that we are very glad that we have today with us. Uh, thank you, and the floor is yours. Well, good, good afternoon. Bona tarda. We say in, in Catalan. Uh, as uh, my colleague said, I'm Christian Balsais. I'm the CEO and the founder of uh, Balsais Group. First of all, I would like to, to thank the City Promotion, the Barcelona City Council, for inviting us to take part of this uh, session. We've been uh, participating in other events. You do great events, interesting topics, uh, friendly approach. Uh, congratulations for your job because it's very important for this beautiful city that all of us we love, I hope. And uh, also, I'm happy that, to see this international community here listening to us because the essence of Barcelona since 1992, when we did the Olympic Games with Michael Jordan, Carl Lewis, all these superstars, since then, Barcelona has been growing as a, an international projection till today. So I'm very happy to see this work that started in 1992 uh, and to see all of you here, international people interested on how to work in, in Barcelona. Well, today, uh, for this event, we had a lot, of, uh, a lot of people interested on taking part. We are going to record it because we had a lot of interest on this. 
And uh, this morning I was in the office and I was thinking why so many people is interested on, on this topic, how to work. People, they don't like to work and today everybody wants to work. I was thinking why. And I think there is two reasons. There is two reasons. The first reason is that Barcelona is great. People who come to study here, they just not come to study. They come to study and when they stay here, they want to extend their stay because Barcelona is fantastic. We have great universities, fantastic companies, startups, culture, hubs on innovation, on health. We have a quality of life. We have the sea, the sun. Even these glasses, these beautiful glasses, they are done in Barcelona. They are produced in Barcelona. So even we have one of the best glasses of the world produced in this town. The second reason, and also very important, is that the state of Spain last year in 2022, they approved two laws. Uh, one law approved in August that gives more options to the students to remain in the country when they finish their studies. And the second law was approved in December of last year, creating a new permit for all those digital uh, nomads who can work remotely from any place on the world. And of course, Barcelona, as a great city that it is, it's very attractive for all of them, uh, for all those digital profiles to establish themselves here and to work from Barcelona remotely. Today we are going to speak uh, about the, the student visa and how to work in Spain while you are a student and after when you finish your students, your studies. Before we start with the presentation, let me give you one advice. In immigration, every detail counts. So I want all of you to pay attention because all the details that we are going to explain will make the difference on your future in Spain. Well, I don't want to be dramatic, but uh, I'm just telling you that in immigration, all the details that we are going to explain are very important in order to understand how you would be able to work in Spain while you are studying and when you finish uh, your studies. Well, first of all, um, let me re remember what, you, or what a student is in Spain. Okay? A student is a person, well, a student non-European is a person who gets a student permit, not a residence permit. So it's an authorization to stay. The years that this person will be in Spain as a student, they don't count for the citizenship. This is very important. Also, only non-European citizens can get the student permit. European citizens, they can get another type of permit that allows them to study. But only non-European citizens can get the student permit. What is required to get a student permit? Well, the, where the place where you are going to study, it has to be studies that it has to be in person. They cannot be online. A minimum of 20 hours per week. It needs to be authorized by the Ministry of Education of Spain. And the studies that you do, needs, at the end of them, you need to get a diploma or a title. This would be the base of what is a student permit. There is three different types of student permits. There is the 90 days student permit, that basically is just a visa that you get to come to Spain to study for 90 days. There is also the student permit that is valid for six months. With this permit, you don't need to provide criminal records. You don't need to provide a, a medical certificate. It's a permit for six months to study that you can get it at the Spanish consulate in the place of origin where you live, or you can get it in Spain during the 60 days since you enter. It's a permit that is valid for six months, that then you can renew it for one year. And in this case, they will ask you the criminal records and the medical certificate. So there is three types of student per of trust. Well, the glasses are the same color of my... As the presentation, as we said, a permit to stay, it does not count for citizenship, for non-Europeans, and the program person, in person, 20 hours per week, authorized educational center, and obtain a diploma or certificate. The different type of student permits is the 90 days tourist student permit. Then there is the six months student permit that you don't require much documents, and if you want to stay more than six months, it's uh, then required the criminal records and the medical certificate. There is two ways to get the student permit. One uh, way would be to go at the Spanish consulate of your jurisdiction. If you are in the US, there is a consulate in New York, in Chicago, in San Francisco, in Los Angeles, for example. Or 
the students, they have this advantage that they can come here as a tourist and they can apply for the student permit while they are in Spain on the 60 days since they enter the, the Schengen space. The main requirements to get the student permit for those who want to study for a year in Spain, it would be full copy of the passport, financial funds of uh, 7,200 euros, then you need to, ha to have a Spanish private health insurance, you need to provide the criminal records of your country, apostille and translated into Spanish if the language is not Spanish of your country, and you need to prove that you have been admitted in an educational center in Spain, 20 hours per week, personal physical uh, education, and, um, and that you will get a degree when you finish these studies. This would be the main requirements for the, to get how it works, the student permit. Now, my, my colleague Laesa will explain uh, in deep the, the modification of the law that gives uh, more facilities to get the work permit to the students and to work while they are studying, and I let the, her to, to explain you this. Well, um, hello, how are you? As Kristen told you, well, I was presented. I'm Laesa, and well, I'm going to explain you about some things about the changes in the law that uh, the government made uh, this last summer. So the goal was uh, try to keep the talent that is here, that is studying in Barcelona, and to make easier to keep the talent here is to provide an easier way to work while you are in Spain. So actually, you can notice the big changes in the law. Uh, before, when a student wanted to work in Spain, uh, needed to ask for permission. In this case, not since we are in Barcelona, in front of the Generalitat. It was just 20 hours per week. It was so much more complicated. It has to be compatible with your, with your studies. It's also in the area where you are studying only. Um, so they have three months to answer, so usually this takes more time, because if you find a job, uh, maybe the employer don't want to wait until you have an answer of your permit. Um, so, and also the requirements for the company, you have to send them a lot of information, documents, deeds of the company, taxes, and prove that they are able to pay you. So it's really difficult, it used to be like this, to, to work. So now, to be easier, to make easier the things for the students that are here, uh, in this case in Barcelona, to study, they made this change. Because now some study, uh, students are able to work without asking for any kind of permission, and they have this permit automatically uh, when they have approved this permit. What is going to happen and how? Well, the ones that are doing what are considered superior studies, uh, the standard level of the university that in Spanish we call ciclo formativo de grado superior, uh, the bachelor's degrees, master's degrees, PhD, immediately when you have your card now since the moment you apply after the 16th of August, you will be able to see in your cards that you have an authorization to work. The work can be for, uh, until 30 hours per week. Of course, it has to be compatible, but you are not going to go through the foreign office or through the Generalitat to get this permission. So now you can look for the job and they can put you in the system immediately. Um, also, the salary before it wasn't, it wasn't useful to prove that you were having funds to live when you were able to renew. And now you can use this amount, which makes totally sense, right? Because if you are working and you are earning money, how is it even possible that you can use it to sustain yourself while you're here studying? So now they uh, get to this point and they said that it was right and they allow this. And also, the rest of the students are able to study, of course, the other way, going through the Generalitat, and they have to go through the three months of the answer, but it's until 30 hours per week. You don't have limitations geographically, so it means, for example, you're here, you're students, maybe you have holidays, you want to go to work to Ibiza, you can do it. Uh, so this is like the new changes, the more important ones that actually you will notice uh, in your day-to-day -to, -day to be able to work while you have the student visa. So. When you finish your studies, there's like a few options. I will explain some of them, and then Christian explain you different ones. So I like to 
explain to, to the students that are foreigners here that we have two ways to be a foreigner when it comes to the law. So we have the regular law and also we have the law uh, 14 of 2013. And this will give you different options. So actually you have a few ones to, to be able to study once you finish your, your studies. To work, sorry. So, for, uh, when you renew now, after uh, the new change in the law, you will be able to enjoy uh, the good things uh, that come from the changes on the foreigners law that made in August. So, even that everything that I explained to you before is something that you're going to be able to enjoy once you renew recently. You will need to prove, of course, that you have uh, passed your studies, you have the funds to leave, you have the health insurance. And well, when they check it, they will have three months to answer. I'm, I understand that probably most of your students, so you know how it works and how, it, how much time it takes. But once you have it, you will have these benefits. So, uh, well, I was explaining this before, like in, here in Barcelona, you will have to apply in front of the OK if you are not doing superior studies. For example, some of you are studying Spanish, maybe Catalan. And then you will have to prove, as I told you before, that you uh, finished your studies or passed the last year. Um, so, and then uh, you, they, will, they will check it and they will see that you are able to renew your, your visa. So, before the, the, the change in the law, you had to apply in front of the Generalitat. As I told you before, it was until 20 hours per week. Uh, you have to prove that you finished your studies, then you have to stay here in Spain for three years when you f to finish to change to regular residence and work permit. Um, and also you will have to show them the, the offer, uh, do different documents to prove that the company has the requirements and they have three months to answer and usually they, they use the three months. The usual option is to change to a regular residence and work permit. You can work as a self-employee, you can work as a regular employee, you have both options. And it's in front of the Generalitat de Catalunya here. Uh, you will have to finish your studies, but you don't have this requirement to stay in Spain for three years. So maybe you are doing a master's degree, this master's degree is for one year, after you finish you can stay, you can change to a regular residence and work visa. You can, do, you can apply 60 days before your card expires and 90 days after, but not 91, because this happens sometimes and they are incredibly strict when it comes to the timing, uh, 60 days before, 90 days after. So then you will, be, you will need a work contract, you will need to be signed. There's not a requirement to your studies to be related to the job. So you can, job, you can have a work in anything uh, as long as it's correct and they um, uh, are okay with uh, working laws, you will be fine. The permit is from one year. This is something that actually changed and it's great. Now when you renew, you will renew for four years. So it means that after your first renewal, you will be able to apply for a permanent residence in Spain. And actually with the card of four years, you will be able to work as a self-employee, you will be able to work as, a, as an employee. You are not going to have to uh, ask for permission to do that. So it's like a lot of freedom for you. And of course, they have three months to answer. This is like the common thing. And as, as I was explaining to you, there's like two sides. So when it's uh, permits of in the regular foreigners law, they have three months to answer, normally. So this way, we have the internship residency, and it's actually an easy way to start in the working market, not only for foreigners. By the way, actually, I started like this, working because it's usually cheaper for the employees, but it's easier for you because they make things easier. You need to finish your studies. It has, it has to be uh, a degree, a bachelor's degree, a master's degree, and you have up to three years from the moment when you finish to be able to apply with this contract. So the contract can be a work contract, a regular one, you can be paying social security, you can have your salary, but also it can be an agreement between your university and the company. So also uh, the permit now, because we had a, a change in the law in December too, you were having a lot of changes. Uh, and now it's until you can have it for two years. 
and then you will be able to change later to a regular residence and work permit after this. And they have 30 days to answer because this is great. Actually, usually they answer faster. This can change depending on the amount of work that the foreigners office has, of course, but it works really well. It makes it easier to start working. It's actually a work permit. You will have residence that allows you to work. This is what your card is going to say. So it's an option that you should consider when you finish your studies in Spain. And as long as you have a valid permit here, you will be able to apply. For example, if you're a student, maybe you are doing a master's degree, maybe you finished your bachelor's degree like two years ago, and then you have this opportunity, you can apply, even though you didn't finish your studies. So, and this is actually quite popular and complicated to understand. But we have this looking for your residency. Uh, it's also known as the search for your visa, Spanish busca de empleo, as you, where you can read there. This is a permit that you will be able to apply for once you finish your studies, but it has to be from the bachelor's degree. It's the level six of the European Union. And you will be able to live in Spain, you will be able to stay here looking for a job, but the complicated thing about this, about this permit is that you actually can't work with this, but this will uh, leave you, they will, this will guide you to a work permit later, but at least allows you to live here. So, what options do I have when I have the search for your visa? I can wait for one year because you will have to, in case that you want to change to a regular residence, a regular work, residence and work permit, sorry. And, but you can apply at any moment if you have a highly qualified, which makes sense because this is for people that finish superior studies, so it makes sense that you can obtain this type of uh, permit, this type of work contract, and uh, Kristen later will explain you what is the highly qualified residence. And then uh, also you can apply 60 days before your card expires, you have 90 days after, so this gives you some time to consider what you can do when you're finishing your studies. Maybe I, maybe I find a job. If not, maybe I choose this option to be able to stay in Barcelona and then look for a job here, maybe to start a project, because you can start a project too after the first year. You can uh, create a business plan and, and apply for a permit in front of the Generalitat after the first year. And, but it has to be related to your studies. So this means that if you study medicine, then you can apply for a job, I don't know, in doing another thing, maybe uh, working in an office, because this is the requirement. Like, you finish your studies, you stay here to look for a job, then it has to be related. And well, this is the options that the regular fairness law gives you to, to work, to stay in Barcelona, and to find options that you can consider. And now Christian will explain you the, the options that the law 14 uh, will give you. And well. Well, this, uh, now I'm going to explain, uh, Laisa explained the general regime of immigration where there has been some modifications that later on we will recap. And I'm going to explain you the, the law 14, 2013, that it's a law, it's also a law for the startups that it was approved in 2013 in, all, in, all, in order to promote the attraction of talent and entrepreneurship into, into Spain. And one of the main permits that a lot of uh, students and expats, they apply for during this year, since 2013, is the highly qualified visa. This is a, a residence permit that uh, the application is done online through a fast track process. The, the, once you apply in 20 labor days, you receive the answer. And if the answer is positive, the permit is valid for three years. And uh, basically, to apply for it, you need to have a, a work contract or a work offer uh, from a company that is willing to pay, if you are under 30, uh, at least a salary of 30,000 euros. If you are above 30 years old, it has to be a salary of at least 40,300 euros. For this application of the highly skilled professionals, they are looking for talent for, to attract interesting profiles. So it's very important that the job position is related to your studies. And uh, if, if it's not related, at least you need to have experience for three years on the sector. Normally, this type of application is for, it's successful for profiles of the IT sector. 
uh, or digital, uh, digital sector, all, all these innovative uh, things, digital content, all these normally these profiles, they succeed. Also, there is profiles like engineers or specific positions, technical positions, qualified positions, they, they also work. The good thing of this, the, there is a lot of positive things about this visa, is that it's very fast, that it's a permit for three years, that they give you the work permit straight away, and that you, you can attach to your application your, your wife or husband and your kids, uh, and, and your couple will have the right to work as well. So, the highly, so if, if I'm a highly skilled professional and I get this permit, my family will get also a permit for three years, and more important, that my couple will be able to work as well and not having to have all this procedure about getting a, a work permit. Then there is also in this law 14, uh, 14 2013 to attract talent and entrepreneurship, they also created a permit for uh, those who want to do a project, an entrepreneurial project in the country. At the beginning of the law, I have to tell you that they were very open to give this permit to all type of projects, but this changed on, on the last years. This is a permit that as well, all the permits through this law are, are fast, it's 20 labor days, the, the, the procedure is online, and uh, if it gets approved, you received a three years residence permit. Um, another thing important is that this project needs to be approved by the Ministry of Economy, by a department on the Ministry of Economy, and uh, to get this entrepreneur visa, they are looking to IT sector, innovative project, fast growth, so they are very selective. Not all the project matches with an entrepreneur visa, but if it's in the, in the digital sector, in the IT sector, if there, it's a, if there is no competence on, on the idea of the project, it could succeed. We have successful cases in the office, but I have to tell you that it's restricted. Not all the projects matches, and, uh, and day by day they are becoming more strict on to IT because the, the government or the state of Spain, they want to attract mostly IT, IT projects to the country. It does, not that, it does not need to be big or small. It does not need to have a big investment or a small investment, but they need to see this IT component, this innovation, this uh, something new that will be good for the Spanish market. And uh, they also request financial funds from the applicants, 8,400 for the principal, 6,300 for the spouse, and 4,200 for each kid. Uh, this would be the financial funds. And on regards to this uh, type of visa, my advice is that if you are interested in, pues we can do a pre-evaluation to see if it could match, because we had surprises. We had small cases, uh, but with a big IT component that they approved and big projects that they rejected because they consider that it's not interested for the Spanish market. So at the end, it's the best is to analyze, and if we see some chances of success, pues we can at least ask this uh, request to the Minister of Economy to look into the project. If they approve it, pues you would get the three years permit, uh, authorization to work for you, your wife, and, and the kids can be part of the application, so there is several advantages. And, uh, and the last one, and the, that is also under the law 14, 2013, that it was included in December of last year, the state of Spain, the, they want to convert Spain into a hub of uh, remote workers because it's a country that has all the conditions to be attractive for this profile. As you may know, we had the COVID, so all this been developing a lot before the remote workers. Actually, before COVID, we had also uh, clients from the US that they are already talking about this, about the nomad, digital nomads. I was saying, what is the digital nomad? Because I, but now it's a, a reality that uh, most of the work, uh, the jobs you can do remotely. So uh, this was approved in December, came into effect 1st of January. The idea is to attract talent, IT, digital nomads, remote workers that they can do uh, their work from Spain. Again, it's a permit for three years. In 20 labor days, they reply. You can include your family on the, on the application with the right to work. And uh, you need to prove either that you are an employee of a, of a company abroad and that this company authorizes you to do this work from Spain, or if you are a freelancer, you are a developer, for example, that it's a classical because a developer can do this in Hawaii, in Barcelona, or in Canary Islands. 
So the developer needs to prove that he has clients in other countries, that these clients authorize the developer to, or the freelancer to do this job from Spain, and, uh, and then pues, they also give the residence permit. For the digital nomads, the, the idea is very nice and very clear that uh, if you can do the work remotely, you can get the permit, but there is two limitations or two things to consider. If you are an employee, the company needs to pay your social security in Spain unless there is a convention between Spain and the country where you work on regards to social security. There is around 20, 25 countries that they have signed an agreement with Spain to cover the social security if an employee comes to Spain, like, uh, for example, the US, Colombia, Russia, the UK, all the European Union countries. But the thing is that you need to get this certificate of coverage of the social security in Spain. If not, the company needs to register in Spain to pay your social security, which would be around 30% of your net salary. So this would be one limitation, the social security. And the second limitation is that the em employee it needs to pay taxes. They created a special regime of 24% for the digital nomads on the, on the income from professional activities, and they don't have to declare their wealth or their assets outside of Spain for five years. But it's also a limitation because some, some, some of the digital nomads, they will have to pay taxes in Spain, and perhaps they cannot deduct it in their country. So this is a thing that we will see how they will manage because the law is very new. And until 31st of March, they will not establish the final criteria and all this. But what we see is that a lot of people qualifies for the digital nomad visa because they can do their work remotely, either as an employee or as a freelancer. But then we need to see if they want to pay the social security and the taxes because the freelancers as well, once they become uh, digital nomads uh, in Spain, they will have to pay a quote of social security to the Spanish government, which the first year is 80 euros per month. After the first year, it would be between 300 and 600 euros per month, depending on the incomes. And this is an obligation in order to keep the residence permit. So the government wants to attract these profiles, but they also want these profiles to make an effort to contribute to our social security and to our economy. And this would be all. I, I would like to because it's been a lot of uh, a lot of uh, per, a lot of typologies of permits. So I would like to tell you just the key points of each of them, just to to remember, and then we will go through the questions. I want you to put very difficult questions to Laesa because she's number one on this, and also with me. And uh, and any question that you would have, uh, pleasure to answer. Well, basically, the student visa renewal, it's the same documents that you submitted to get it, because you will need to get to submit for the renewal. The bank account has to be in Spain, and the medical insurance has to be Spanish. Before the, before the modification of the law of, two, of 16 of August, you will need to wait for three years until you can modify for a work permit, so you will need to be three years studying in Spain. Now, this changed, so forget about this, because most of you would qualify uh, to get a work permit, um, after you finish your studies, you would have 90 days, 60 days before you finish your studies, up to 90 days after. Uh, well, 60 days before you finish the residence card, but you need to have finished the, the studies, up to 90 days after, if you find a work contract, you will not need to wait for three years to get this work permit. So you would get it after you finish your studies. This is very important because change totally the three years that all the students had to wait before this modification on the law. The internship visa basically is convenio de practicas. If you finish one uh, studies, you, during the three years after you finish, if you find a company that will give you a work contract to do the things that you studied, you can get a work permit in Spain. This would be this, the, this type of uh, permit. The third option, the job set, the job seeker visa is if you don't find a, a job offer during these 90 days since you finish your studies and you don't find an internship, you can always prolong your, uh, your stay in Spain for two years, two years. for two years uh, with Busqueda de Empleo. So if you don't find the job during these 90 days you will, or you don't find an internship, you will always have the possibility to extend your stay for two years, for 24 months, and you will be searching for a job during this, uh, these months, and then you would be able to switch to the, to the work permit. And then 
not connected with this, at, well, connected and not connected at any time. If you, as a student, find a highly qualified uh, work offer, you can change to the highly qualified work visa. If you want to start your own project, you can do the interpreter visa, if it's digital IT innovative. And if you work remotely for a company outside of Spain, we could study the possibility to get the, the digital nomad visa. So this would be a resume of the, of the permits. And uh, from our side, well, thank you for, for coming, for listening. Now is your turn to ask us questions uh, of anything, and we will be glad to answer you. <laughs> but, good, good, but we, we like the questions. Eh? Hello. Uh, I have two uh, questions. Uh, one of them is uh, one of my friends came here as a tourist, and he wants to stay here as a student. Can he extend uh, his visa in here? How long have he have been your friend here in Spain? Sorry. How long have have been your friend in Spain? No, uh, he newly came here. Recently, he has the first 60 days of uh -huh. uh, the tourist visa to, to apply for a student visa. And then once you apply, you can stay even though you arrive to the 90 days because they extend your permit to stay in Spain until they answer it. Uh, if if uh, his uh, visa expired in here, for example, even he can do it? Yes, he can stay. So you apply in the first 60 days, they are not going to answer mm -hmm. like before the 30 days that are, are left, because they have three months to answer, and usually they use the three months. But once you apply for the student visa while you're here as a tourist, you will have extension of your permit to stay until you have an answer. If it's positive, then he can stay, of course. And if it's negative, they will give him 15 days to leave the country. 15 days. OK, and uh, small, the second question. Uh, I graduated uh, from university in here, and uh, I applied a second university, and I'm doing internship now. So uh, it's almost, I'm here uh, one and a half year. So uh, when can I uh, work full time? You will be able to work full time when you finish, because it has to be compatible with your studies. So. As long as you're studying, uh, you will need to be able to go to the university. And this is why they are not giving 40 hours. It's not allowed. But if you finish, once you're, you're done, you can stay 40 hours per week. Or for example, I don't know if your internship is related to your study, because sometimes mm -hmm. it's to finish, to be able to finish, and sometimes it's not related. So in case that uh, your internship is related to your studies, after that, when you finish, you can have an internship residence, um, and then you will be able to work there for 40 hours per week. Okay, because uh, I heard that uh, after come here, uh, two years later, before it was three, now two years later, you will be able to work uh, full time. Is it true? It's not the three years or two years. When you're a student, you can work once you finish your studies. If your studies are going to last for six months, then after the six months, you will be able to switch. If your studies are for two years, then you will be able to switch after two years. That's the thing. There's another option that it's, it wasn't in the list because it's not specifically for students. But sometimes when you are doing an internship, if you are paying taxes when you, and you get paid, if you've been here for two years, then this exists this figure. It's, in Spanish, it's arraigo laboral. It would be kind of a residence by roots based on the work. And that's another option. And this is when, where you can do it for two years. But it is, depends on the situation specifically. OK, thank you very much. Should I go? One from this side, yeah? Hello. We will do one from each side. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, I have a very particular question. Actually, we are five here as grant holders. And we are in Spain under the law of 14, 2013. Since we enjoyed Barcelona a lot during our stay, we are around uh, two years that we are here. Okay. We wanted to ask what are the opportunities after our three-year contract as a grant finishes. Is it okay to transform <coughs> to a work permit? Is it easily or 
even we have heard that if you find a job opportunity, if it doesn't meet some requirements, you are not allowed to work. Well, <clears throat> first of all, which type of permit you have? It is work and residency permit. But what is the name? Highly qualified or in? It, it is highly qualified. Yeah. Uh, altamente qualificado. PhD grant holders, basically. Okay. Well, uh, on this regards, uh, this is a general rule of immigration in Spain. If you have been resident of Spain for 12 months, at any time, if you find a job offer, you can modify the permit to a regular work permit. So in your case, at any time, if you find a job offer, you can uh, apply for a modification from a highly skilled professional to the regular work permit. Now I need to shout. But we, as we read, we came up with some stuff that it says that the company should have some uh, fundings. It, uh, it should pay you uh, 40,000 euros and stuff. No, no, for the... So it is not necessary. It's not, you, you move to the general regime, which it has to be a, a salary above... Uh, Minimum. 15,120 euros, it's the minimum salary in Spain. So if you have a regular residence and work permit, hope you earn more than that, but they can pay you this amount. Uh, now I'll um, yes, over here. Um, so my question is also very specific. So I came here to do an internship for six months, and I've also been paying taxes. But um, I, was, I came here under student visa. So when my internship ends, uh, which is on this month, what are my options? Um, am I supposed to, can I transi transition to a work permit? Or what are my options? Because maybe the, the company that I internshiped at um, wanted to hire me now as a full-time employee but I don't know how to go about the paperwork, so how am I supposed to transition from a student who came here to do an internship in that company to now a full-time employee? So as uh, we were explaining before, uh, one, of the, uh, one of the goals of the, of the changes in the law is to, be, to be make easier to students to stay, so if you finish your internship and you're able to prove that you finish currently, I understand yes, because it's the same company, you can switch to a regular residence and work permit. So the company will have to apply for your permit in front of the Generalitat, and they will have to prove that, of course, they are able to pay you, but it's something easy to, to prove. As long as they are paying their taxes, they will be fine. And they will have three months to answer. You can go get one year of residence and work permit, and you can have four years of residence and work permit, and after five years, the permanent residence. But first, you will have to go through the like that. And once they give you the permit, then you, are, you will have a work permit and be able to stay here. Hello. I have a question about uh, which of these uh, residences, visas, <coughs> uh, start counting the, the years for permanent residency. I'm now uh, as an intern, uh, as a student, so I know that's actually like a permanent senior state, but not a residency one. So I want to know which of these ones let me count my years to apply them to a permanent uh, residence. Yes, yeah. for the permanent and the citizenship of Spain, uh, the only permit that de does not count is the, the student permit. So all the other options that we said, the internship, the searching for a job visa, highly qualified interpreter or digital nomad, work permit itself, all these, they would count for the permanent and, uh, and for the citizenship. Remember that, uh, well, I tell you because this is something very interesting, that Latin Amer Amer uh, Spain has an agreement with Latin American countries, so uh, the citizens of Latin Iberian American countries, after two years of residency, they could access to the citizenship. Other nationalities, it's 10 years, but with, uh, with the Iberian American countries, it's after two years of residency, they can apply for the passport. Now, the, the state of Spain, they did some improvements uh, on the... On, on the timings to get the nationality, and now in one, one year and a half, they, they receive the passport. So that's something interesting as well. Um, shall I? Yeah. Hi, my name is Ali, uh, and I come from Iran. First of all, thank you so much for your presentation and your time. I really appreciate it. Um, I'm a graduate of 
the year 2021. So back then I didn't have this plenty of options. So I had to convince my company to go for internship residency. So Contrada de Practica. So for 14 months. So it's going to expire this month. So now we decided to go for Indefinido. Uh, my first question is, uh, for how long it's going to be the new um, visa, the general visa work permit? And the second question, is it going to be uh, restricted to any geographic location or not? I would appreciate it. Yes. Yeah, the first one that you will have will be for one year. And it's not restricted. So if at some point you decide to change your job and maybe move to another city, you are able to do it. And as we were explaining before, now the second car is for four years, even though uh, since you have a residency uh, for an internship, then this year counts for the permanent residence. So once you arrive to the five years, you are able to have the permanent residence. And of course, you can move, you can find different jobs once you obtain the, sec the next permit. So the first year, I can change my company or my yes. location. OK, thank you so much. Hello, everyone. Um, my question is, this one. am I right, this, this, uh, this statement? If someone uh, has a, a visa highly qualified and work for, works for one year, after that, that person can ask for a regular work permit without any other specific or special requirement? No, in, to ask a regular work permit, you need to prove that you have been resident of Spain as highly qualified for 12 months. So after 12 months, if you find a company who is willing to hire you, you can ask for the modification to the regular work permit, but it, it's mandatory to have a work offer from a company in Spain because there needs always, there in, well, in, in immigration, there always needs to be a reason. So I want the interpreter because I have a project. I'm, I want the highly qualified because I'm super intelligent. I want the, well, <laughs> I want uh, to renew my studies because I want to study more. So if I want to modify from the highly qualified to a work permit because I have a work offer. The only thing that you need to wait for 12 months. The work offer. Well, the work offer and the, the company needs to provide that they are paying the taxes, that they don't have debts with the social security, that they are properly registered, all these five, six documents that all the companies have. And, uh, and then you can modify from a highly skilled to a, to a work permit, always after 12 months. OK, hello. Um, I'm a master's student. And I did my master in three different countries. So I'm doing my second year here in Barcelona, and it's my last semester. So basically, my first uh, year, I did it in Italy. And therefore, I got my residence permit, the permit of the sojourner from Italy. And then I renewed it so I can stay in uh, Europe. In addition, I, get, uh, I got an official document from Barcelona uh, it's called like student mobility, so I can stay in Barcelona. But I didn't apply to any of like work, per sorry, like uh, residence permit in Barcelona or even a student visa. Therefore, my question here, because I'm interested to stay in Barcelona and even work here because of the job opportunities that are related to my major. So what can be the procedure now? Because I just have a student mobility document here from Barcelona and an Italian residence permit like they will last till October. So, well, there's different options when you are here uh, with a valid permit that allows you to stay here. For now, your, your permit actually comes from Italy, and this allows you to uh, do this part of your master's degree in, in Barcelona, which I understand uh, when you finish, you will obtain the degree from Italy, right? No, it should be from uh, Italy, Vienna, and Barcelona. So you will get the three of them. But the, the first permit came from Italy, and then this allowed you to come here. <laughs> so most of them, for now, the thing is that you need to be here uh, with a valid permit. So it's not easier for you to go through the change to, to the regular residence and work permit. But you can apply for the internship residence. You can get a highly qualified to. Uh, you can uh, try the, the entrepreneur if you have a project that can be valid. So these options, you, this is something that you can consider because now you are finishing your master's degree. So it means that you have this up to three years to use the internship residence to start and then switch to a regular residence and work permit. Yeah, it's, uh, 
So it's not possible like to apply for a Spanish visa, for example, now it does not make any sense. Because right? your permit, it's, it doesn't it's come from okay, here. Okay, yes. I got you. So it's not a change actually. All right, thank you. It's okay. <laughs> here. Hello, my name is Susana. I have two questions. The first question is, for the visa looking for a job resident, you need a specially master because we, with my classmate, we read about the official, and, and I'm not sure if my mom master is official or not. And my other question is about the, uh, the visa high qualification. If what I need of the company, only I need the offer of job, only that, or I need more things about the company? Yeah, as a, for busca de empleo, it's a good question. Uh, in order, once you finish your studies, if you want to apply for searching for a job visa, for a visa to search for a job, busca de empleo in Spanish, it needs to be a master, an official master registered in, what, in the RUPT, is a registro universidades y centros. De centros docentes y, universitarios. Y centros docentes y universitarios. So it's a special register that there is a website in the Ministry of Education of Spain where you can check if your master is there. From my experience, uh, the official masters from the public universities, they are all there. Universities like Pompeu Fabra, uh, they have also SADE, uh, ES, they have also masters there. But there is also a lot of private universities that they don't have their masters in this list. So, this, so we need to check in this list if the master qualifies to get the búsqueda de empleo, to have more time to search for a job. My advice would be to ask to the center where you study that they confirm you if they are registered or not. And if they are not, also to suggest to register because it's important for the students because not all the students, they find the job the first day. So this way to get a permit to find a job is, is excellent for the, rest, for, the, for the students. And on regards to the highly skilled professional question, no, that uh, one, you would need a work, work contract with the condition that they will hire you once the file is approved. This work contract needs to specify a salary above 40,300 euros. There needs to be a description of the position that you will be doing in the company, the functions, in, win, in, in which level they will, in which category they will register you in the social security. There is several things to answer in a paper from the company. And we need to be uh, careful with this description of the position because this description needs to match with what you studied. And, uh, and also they need to be careful that they put you in the social security in the correct group. Uh, because if you are an engineer, because in the engineer's group, uh, to, to be clear that they are taking you in a position as a highly skilled professional. But uh, basically it would be the work contract, the description of the position very deep. Also the curriculum vitae of the applicant, the university degrees that matches with the position. They ask also the constitution of the company whom hires you and the, the ID of the person who signs the contract. This would be to tell you everything. Thank and you very much. Thank you. I have a difficult question, and uh, I'm sorry if I'm <laughs> off topic. It's about the visa type that wasn't mentioned before. I'm asking this on behalf of my PhD students who are here with a researcher visa which allows them to study and work full-time at the same time. With the law 14, 2013? Or? Uh, I'm not sure about the law name. It's a visado investigador. Vale. Yeah, so same. they are Marie Curie grant holders, mm -hmm. doing their PhD here and working for three years. Now, they are required to spend one full academic year outside the European Union. What options they have to keep their work and residence permit and receive a salary while they are not here in Spain for, let's say, 12 months. Is it a possibility? It's co really complicated, actually. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is why Christian let uh, me answer. Okay. Uh, I it's had really, this intuition. But it's really complicated because uh, well, the way to keep the residence permits actually is to stay here at least six years, six months during the year. So what would I try to do? Because it depends where are you going. It's Australia. <laughs> I was hoping was something somewhere in the European no. Union. Yes, it's going to be really complicated. 
to be honest, because you don't have something valid. It's like, for example, if I'm leaving after five years and I'm able to obtain my permanent residence, I can lose it, but I can obtain it again. But they are here for three years. But there's something that I could try, and it's to get, um, when they are back here after maybe two years, we could try an arraigo laboral, because they they would be ha they would have more than six months in the uh, in the social security, so maybe we could try like this, but it could be really complicated. Okay, so how long do they need to live and work in Spain to apply for arraigo laboral? Two years uh, living in Spain, six months in the social security. Okay. Actually, they would be able to apply now for the arraigo laboral, which it doesn't make S sense because they have another permit. So, for instance, if they, if they do a three-year PhD. They could go in the last year mm -hmm. to Australia and apply for a rego laboral before. Would that be an option? The problem would be when they have to renew their rego laboral because they would check their passports, and in the passport they would see that they weren't here for at least six months. And are they allowed to work remotely and get a salary? Remotely from Australia? Yes. No, but they can come and we can find options. There's okay, always no, something. Thank you. I know it's a good question. <laughs> yeah, we need to go into the details and, and to play it's a little bit with the It's laws. a yes. problem with the European Union's Marie Curie program because they require some mobility. If it wasn't the last year of the, the, the studies, it would be great because then we would be able to pay with the Raigo Laboral. But if they are leaving the last year, they are people that come in first new. So this is why it's more complicated. But maybe we could try after two years in Spain, use uh, this part of the life here, like with the social security. Maybe we can do something. Well, I think we have time for the last question. I'm so sorry because there are so many hands raised. <laughs> uh, next time we will have to make a longer session. But as I told you before, we, we are asked to leave soon. So last question, please. Uh, hi. So uh, I'm just asking for because uh, it's for me and my friend because we come from the Philippines and but we entered Spain on a diplomatic passport and we have a diplomatic NIE and we'd want to stay here permanently. So we'd have to. Uh, but we're cur uh, we're both currently studying. I'm doing my bachelor's, which I'm starting in June, and she's doing her master's. And uh, since we don't need a student visa to study, we didn't apply and. We don't have any visa stamped on our passport when we entered due to it being diplomatic. Is there a way that we could change it to having a student visa or just a residence permit? But at the moment, we have a residence permit, but it's the diplomatic NIE. Yeah, well, um, actually, we had other cases like this one because, uh, because of connection, relations that we have with the embassies. And uh, it's very clear, the solution. You need to get a regular passport. So, because the diplomats, they have a diplomat passport and a regular passport. In order to apply for the student permit, you have to apply through the regular passport. And for this, you need to prove that they stamp your entry and that you, ha and that you are on the 60 days uh, period. The only thing that as you being from the Philippines, you, I mean, in general, eh, the solution would be you go back to the Philippines, you apply for a regular Schengen visa. You can correct me, eh? You apply for the regular Schengen visa in the Philippines with the regular passport, even that you are diplomat, and then you come to Spain with the with this regular passport. They just time the entry, and then you have 60 days to apply for the student permit. So we had this case two two or three times in the office, and the answer is the same always: to get a regular passport and get a regular visa, and to enter with the regular passport, Spain. So we have to go back to the Philippines Well, you have. The thing is that the Philippines, uh, you need a, to enter Schengen with the regular passport, you need a visa. So you need to go back to the Philippines to get a Schengen visa on the regular passport and to enter in Spain. It's, a, it's, it's like it is. Well, or apply from the Spanish consulate there instead of the Schengen visa. Maybe you can apply for the, for the student visa from, from the Philippines. But always with the regular passport because the diplomat passport has this limitation. The thing is that, well, it's que we could go into the 
technality because this case make us crazy two years ago. <laughs> we didn't know how to do it uh, because it was a residence, but, but the diplomats, they don't have a residence uh, permit. They have a diplomat's permit. So it does not apply any of the regular laws to them for the good and for the bad. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Christian and Laesa. We have seen that they can answer all the questions. <laughs> and here you have their contacts, if you need to contact them. And also, I, if you, I think some of the questions you asked might be answered on the procedures section of the website. So maybe you can take a look at there, and that can help you also. Thank you again. And we hope to see you in other activities. Thank you.